Welcome everyone to our latest episode of Jim and Java. Welcome everyone, I'm Jim Dempsey. Thank you for joining us for our weekly program, Jim and Java, where we answer your fundraising questions. This channel is designed and developed to provide advice and counsel to nonprofit organizations and individuals so they can increase their income and be fully funded. I hope you'll subscribe to this channel and want to be part of our little community. To reach me, you can email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And if you're on Twitter, you can reach out at devfstrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. Our first question is from Ward in Minnesota. Lord, Ward asks, I did a digital event last spring. Should I do one again this year or skip it? Well, Ward, that's a uh, difficult question and it's an individual question. If uh, every state we are finding is different, every regulation is different. Uh, at the time of this broadcast, things continue to progress and get better. And if, um, if they continue to get better, you may even look at the possibility of being able to do a smaller live event. But I'm going to assume that your question is that you can't do a live event and that you want to find out should you do some kind of a digital event once again this year. Now, Ward, there's a number of things for us to consider. Number one, how well was your event promoted last year? Was it well attended? Did you feel that your live stream pre-recorded broadcast was effective? Did you follow all the proper procedures that I outlined? Did you know, make sure that no speaker went any more than four minutes? Did you make sure that your overall program was not more than 30 minutes? Did you offer opportunities for them to give online? Uh, make sure that your marketing was strong. If all those things were very positive and you got good results, I would say you could probably go ahead and do another one. But you just need to remember that we found over time that we can't get the same numbers in the last seasons, uh, the fall of 2020 and spring of 2021, we've just not seen the same response to, of people to be on virtual broadcasts as we have in, as we did in the spring of 2020. So as long as you go in there knowing that, I think you can do another one and do it, uh, make an attempt to even do it better. It definitely is going to generate more income than no event at all. Now, if you decide you don't want to do the event at all, then make sure that you at least follow up with your major donors, individuals who gave large gifts last year, and make sure that those individuals are challenged to give at least the amount that they gave last time and potentially even more. So Ward, I hope that answers your questions. The next question we have today is from Ralph in Fairfax, Virginia. And Ralph asks, what kinds of things do you look for in a good venue? Well, Ralph, I'm assuming that we are starting to move towards a live event, which is really good. That's always exciting when people start to look for venues, live venues once again. Ralph, what I always say, I'm, I'm looking for a couple things. Number one, uh, you want to make sure that the venue is nearby your largest group in your donor base. So in other words, if you are in a large metropolitan area, but a the majority of your individuals, your donor base, are in a northwestern suburb, say, that might be where you want to have your venue. I've seen too many organizations make the mistake of trying to have their dinner either in their facility where their headquarters is or nearby. Now, as an example, I've seen rescue missions try and do events for major donors and dinners near the rec rescue mission downtown. Well, turns out that that area might not have been as safe as some people felt or that some of the donors were comfortable with. And as a result, the attendance was not as large. And I've had some that have gone out into the suburbs from rescue missions and done extremely well. So convenience is important. Number two, it needs to be a venue that people look forward to going to. It, you just don't get excited about a 
club organizational basement or or a church basement people don't get excited about going to something like that they may get excited to go to a country club especially an exclusive country club they may also look forward to going to a marriott a hyatt a hilton they most definitely look forward to a crown plaza or a ritz carlton and so you should look for those venues that people really, really want to go to. Think about your event being one where people look forward to getting dressed up and going on a date night, if you can picture that. So you get dressed up in nice clothes, you go out to a nice venue, you have a nice meal and a nice program, and you are very willing to give a gift at the end of the night as, as a result. Let's also talk about, for the venue, what does the ballroom look like? Make sure that it's not too sterile. Too many ballrooms are four air walls. Uh, some have uh, two solid walls and two air walls. I would say at a minimum, uh, I would say the least you should accept would be one air wall. Um, I wouldn't go any more than that. If you can find a ballroom with four solid walls, uh, I am more in favor of a square than I am a rectangle room. And if I'm gonna use the rectangle, I'm gonna use the long walls versus the short walls on those. Make sure that this venue also is close by to parking. You have to be careful for individuals who have special needs and uh, make sure that they're not having to navigate stairs or uh, sometimes even um, ex uh, escalators are, are difficult for special needs people. So make sure that it's, uh, it's something that's close by to parking and easily accessible. Also, also in the venue, I would make sure that you've got everything from adequate lighting to sound. I generally will bring my own audio, visual, and sound equipment because I've found over the years that most clubs and hotels and other venues have very inadequate uh, sound and light and audio visual facilities. So those are the things that I would look for in a venue. Ralph, I hope that helped you. As we conclude today, I just want to remind you that I uh, would love to have you subscribe to our channel of individuals trying to increase income and be fully funded. And also, if you need to reach out to me, go to Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And as always, I wish you the best as you increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Take care, everyone.